Welcome to VW 6.1. Today we're going to be talking about polynomial functions. So to start, write this down, polynomial function characteristics. And that's because the first problem says to identify polynomial functions. To be able to determine which one of these are polynomial, we first got to figure out, well, what does it mean to be a polynomial function? So number one, you're going to write, they have real coefficient, real coefficients, meaning there's no imaginary numbers. So no i anywhere. Number two is going to be the exponents are whole numbers. And the third one is going to be there are no variables in any denominator. And to clarify number two, that's relating to variables. An exponent on a real number is perfectly fine. Okay, so for these, it says determine which of these are polynomial functions. For those that are, state the degree. For those that are not, tell why not. Okay, so don't worry about degree yet. Let's just focus on polynomial function. So for A, I can see the coefficients are real, so step one is okay. The exponent four is a whole number, and there are no fractions, so we're good. So yeah, so put happy face, definitely a polynomial function. For b, the thing of this is x to the 1 half, so already we're breaking rule 2. The exponent is not a whole number, so that's not okay. For c, that's crazy. That is definitely breaking rule number 3 of a variable in your denominator. So we're going to put sad face. d is kind of interesting because it's number 0, but notice how that actually does fit every single rule we have up there. So that would be considered a polynomial function. For the same logic, eight is okay. And then f, f looks pretty crazy, but it does follow all of the rules. So we're gonna put happy face. Okay, now it says for those that are, state the degree. So for happy faces, we're gonna put d under them for degree. So simply put, degree is the highest power of x in the expression. So that's the simplest idea to understand, or simplest way to think about it. So if we look at this thing, I see that 4, that's the highest power of x, so you put degree is 4. Zero is kind of a weird case because there is no x and it's number zero. So the book actually calls this a special case of no degree. But this is kind of unique. This is a special case. And that's because it actually is number zero. For most constants like e, you think of this as 8x to the zero, and you would say the degree would be zero as well. But don't worry about d. I'm not going to test you on this. That's more of an interesting fact for yourself. This is something that's more important for you, for you to understand is that for constants, it'll typically be zero as your degree. And then for this one, a lot of people want to write three, but it's actually going to be five. And that's because if you're to multiply it out, this x cubed will get multiplied by an x squared. That would make x to the fifth. Okay, so there's degree. Now the last part is going to be leading term meaning LT. So let's write LT under everything. So leading term, that's going to be the first term when your expression is in order. And when I say order, Order is going to mean the highest power of x first. So for example, a, this thing is not in order. 
you would want to write it as negative 3x to the fourth plus 2. And then right there, that's your leading term, negative 3x to the fourth. For d and e, not much you can do. So just write 0 and 8. And then f is the cool one because you can actually multiply it out to really see it. That'd be negative 2x to the third times x squared minus 2x plus 1. If you're going to multiply this whole thing out, so we could multiply everything like this, but we just care about the first term in order, which means you just want to think about what happens when you want to multiply these two. And you're going to get negative 2x to the fifth. And that would be your leading term. Next one. This is identifying zeros and their multiplicities. So zero is going to be pretty straightforward. It's simply what makes the expression zero, or think of it as like an x-intercept. Same idea. Or we've been talking about it as a root as well. So look at these three expressions here. We can see that 2 would make it 0, negative 3, and 1 half. Now this new word is going to be multiplicity. So I want you all to highlight that, multiplicity. Multiplicity, the simplest way to think about it is it's simply the exponent on a given root factor. So under z, you're going to write m for multiplicity. If you want to find the multiplicity of this 2, look at where it came from, right here. The exponent right here is 1, so the multiplicity is going to be 1. For the negative 3, it came from right here. The exponent is 2, you write 2. So the 1 half, if you look right there, that's going to be 4. Now to understand what's actually happening, we're going to graph this in your graphing calculator. So go to your calculator, and notice how I typed it in. Plot, and use the zoom feature. So you're going to pinch out to kind of make it a little nicer. Right about here is pretty good. And you can screenshot this and drop it into your notes, and we can talk about it. So you should have something like this. To really understand what's happening, look at each zero. So here's your negative 3. I'll put a box around it so you can really see what's happening. 1 half is right here. And the last one is 2. That would be right there. And I'm putting a box so you can take a look at what's happening at the intercept. So for negative 3, take a look at what's really in that box. Just focus on the box. Notice how it looks like a parabola, which means it's actually behaving like x squared. Now if you look at 1 half, it looks kind of strange because it looks pretty flat. But what we can do is kind of expand the box to make it a little more clear. Notice how it's also a parabola, but it's wider. And the reason that is, is because of the multiplicity. It's 4. So over here, we're going to write, it's actually behaving like x to the 4. And for the last one, notice how it's just crossing through. So if I really zoom in, it's basically like a line through right here. So right here, it's behaving like x to the 1. So multiplicity is a way to understand what is happening at the actual intercept. So notice how if it's 2, it's like an x squared. It's creating like a parabola. x to the 4th is making a y parabola. And then x to the 1 is making a line, like it's crossing straight through. So for you guys, the best thing to understand is going to be these two words, cross and touch. So at 2, I can see it cross. I'll put a cross right there. At negative 3, it touched it. And same thing at 1 half. 
It just touched it. So the final thing to add here is going to be your multiplicity chart. There are two types of numbers we're looking at, even versus odd. When it's even, you're going to notice that the graph behaves like a parabola, like this. And we just call that a touch. If it's odd, you're going to notice that it behaves like an odd power of x, meaning it's going to cross through like this. Or it could be kind of fancy, and it's going to cross through like that. So this would be for m357 dot dot dot. This would be an m1. So in a nutshell, that's what's happening with multiplicity. Now for the last example, look right here. It says find a polynomial function of degree three whose zeros are negative three, two, and five. So first thing is we'll just write a function. And if the zeros are negative three, two and five, simply work backwards. It must be x plus three, x minus two, and x minus five. And that's it.